need some help, I might be able to help you, or your your advisors might be able to help you in determining what is the program that's best suited for, for what I intend to do. And should have been talking to people that are going to provide letters of recommendation. Very important in these applications are the letters of recommendation. And the need to talk about you as a researcher as opposed to, oh, he's a wonderful person, you know, he does all kinds of uh, extracurricular activities, and he's a true leader. Those are all fine and good, but what have you done in research? When selecting the people that are going to provide you with letters of recommendation, it's, again, key number two. Select people that are going to be able to talk about what you've done in research. At the very least, what your potential is as a researcher. What do you bring to the lab? What do you bring to the, to the organization that you're going to be going to? If you have done uh, internships, that's something that you should perhaps get people that uh, you know were your, your supervisors to write something for you. And the one thing that you should also avoid is you can't have a form letter. So all three of your letters are verbatim the same. That's not going to work. Make sure that there's something personal, there's something that's an experience from the person providing the, the letter and yourself. And if you have questions, you can ask your advisor, you can ask, you can ask me, send me an email. It's uh, miguel.gonzalez at utrgb.edu. So program information, here it talks about to select and recognize and supported who have demonstrated the potential to be high achieving scientists. So somebody's got to say that. And it can be you, obviously, but then your letters. So that shows the importance of those letters. Uh, here's what, what you'll get. A five-year award, about $138,000. Believe it or not, that's, that's a good chunk. It's good money. Three years of support. You're going to be making $30, $34,000 a year. It's above and beyond, you know, education allowance, and they also provide you with money for, for travel and other things. For the last six years, seven years, about 2,000 fellowships, but the success rate is only 12%. Okay, so you're competing against the top of the top nationally. If you get one of these, it means that your, your, the probability of success as a researcher and perhaps a academician uh, is, is, is pretty good. Okay, eligibility, real quick. U.S. citizens, nationals, and permanent residents. Early career undergraduate and graduate students pursuing research-based MS or PhD. But I mentioned to you that, you know, if you show a plan towards PhD, it's probably something that uh, is, is in your in your favor. So pursuing uh, science and engineering, enrolled in accredited institutions uh, by the fall of next year. So you have to show that you're gaining admission or you're going to be admitted into a into a program graduate program by the fall. Academic levels, seniors or or post -backs with no graduate study, first year graduate students second year graduate students. So if you're going into your third year of your PhD, well, it's not gonna work. So how often can you apply? I mean, most of you are probably in category one or two. So you can probably apply up to three years, three times, when you're a, a bachelor, when you're, you're, if that doesn't, if you're not awarded at that time, you could apply in your first year of graduate school. So they ask you to fill out a form with all of this personal information, education, work experience, what <coughs> field of study you're going to, you're proposing to any academic honors. Publications are also a plus. If you have any publications, whether they be uh, presentations at a conference, actual journal articles, anything that you have, uh, personal relevant background, and future goal statement. In this part of the application, you say something about yourself. It's also an opportunity to show a little bit about how your work is going to meet the broader impacts. How will your, the work that you're going to be doing, how is that going to impact society in a broad sense? 
you've had activities that you've reached out to the community, this is probably a place where you can include as a form of a broader impacts of the work that you're going to be doing. The more concrete those goals are, the higher the value of your application is going to be perceived. But the impact of that has to be much deeper for the value of that to go up. The graduate research statement, it's two pages. The better that you describe it in your writing, the more likely people are to get it. And even a better tactic is to say, this, this is it, broader impacts, and then a, a brief description. And obviously, where's the intellectual merit going to be? In the research statement. You can talk about you know what uh, what things are are that you're going to be doing that are going to transform X field. Any questions to this point? Start getting some. Back and forth. Yes, ma'am. Um, do they need to know that you have been accepted in order for you to be? Not necessarily. But the issue is that if you're not accepted and you're not attending, they're not going to give you the money. If I have been an intern that was funded by the NSF, does that Excellent. disqualify me from getting another NSF funded fellowship? That doesn't disqualify doesn't. you. Another very important factor in this is grammar. The worst thing you can do is, is to have a if you improper grammar in this thing, that's, that's just going to turn the value of your of your application uh, way down. So, and sweat. Take your time. Start start now. You know, read it. Have people read it. Read it out loud. Make sure it makes sense. You can't assume that people are going to be able to get it. Right? You have to tell them. Hit them in the face with it. Uh, what is a competitive GPA and how much is that weighed into the evaluation? It is weighted. If you have a competitive application, intellectual merit, broad impact, you can get awarded with less than a stellar, less than stellar you know, 3.5 or above. And you may have to explain because sometimes, you know, people have issues and the GPA suffers for it. That you have to explain very, very succinctly in your personal statement. You're saying, hey, I am deserving of this fellowship. 